Now, a couple of weeks ago, Ross was in Los Angeles visiting the legendary Columbo, alias Peter Falk. And by all accounts, Ross made quite an impression. Like, you know, my wife thinks you're terrific, but I just, I gotta ask you one thing. Do you ever, I mean, really, I mean, do you ever get tired of people, you know, like, uh, doing impressions of you? No. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. That's great. That's oh. great. There's nothing that tickles me more when I see people do impressions of me. Really? I love it. Oh, a, a few questions from my report, Doc. Now, uh, Dr. Miller. you were in Mexico when this thing took place, and uh, the dates there were... Uh... Gee, you don't have a pencil, do you? Thanks. You know, my wife, she gives me one every morning, and uh, I just can't seem to hold on to it. Do you actually like it when people talk to you about Colombo? Ah... Uh... I tell you, I like it, uh, of course, sometimes something funny comes out, like a guy up uh, out of the club would say to me, gee, you know, I saw the show last night. He said, but I, I fell asleep. Uh, uh, how did it end? <laughs> I say, oh, you fell asleep? Uh, well, did you see where they poured the gasoline into the car? Uh, he said, no, I missed that part. That was 10 minutes into the show. <laughs> So the guy was watching the show for six minutes, and he went to sleep. He wants to know, wants to know how it ends. Yeah, a lot of funny things. But I do like to talk about Colombo, yeah. OK, well, we'll talk about him for a, for a few moments then. Sure. One of my favorites in Colombo, Dog. The fact you just called the dog, Dog. Right. You know, the thing about that dog is, uh, most people don't know that. I don't, uh, the first dog was very old. As a matter of fact, the first dog, I didn't even want the dog. We didn't have a dog the first season, and in the second season, the first show in the second season, the director, an old friend of mine, and he, formerly an actor, uh, Nick, uh, he come to me, he says, we, we, I got an idea, we ought to have a dog. I said, Nick, you know, we got the car, we got the cigar, we got the coat. It's not, you huh? know, no, a dog. I think it would be great, a dog. I said, and I thought he'd be talking about some cute dog, and I thought it'd be too cute, you know? I said, no, forget about it, Nick. So nothing said, and then we were shooting about three days, and he says, come on over into this room here with the doctor's office. And I go in there, and before he opens the door, he says, you're going to see the dog. And there's this dog. And he's laid out, and he, can, he can't walk. He's half dead. He's a million years old. <laughs> And he's irresistible. I mean, you gotta, I mean, you fall in love with this thing. And I said, okay, all right. I didn't know it was that gonna be that kind of dog. And that poor thing, uh, he was so old that uh, at the end of the first year he died. So we had to get a new dog. But the new dog was younger. So the problem with the new dog was that we had to make him up. Now, when I go in the morning, it takes me about six seconds. I look in the mirror, I mess up my hair, and I'm made up, I'm ready to go. But sitting in the barber chair next to me is the, is the new dog, and he's getting the clown white on him, and we had to wait every morning, 15, 20 minutes for this dog to get made up. I missed the original dog, uh -oh. he was great. Well, you talk about the car and the coat and the cigar, so you obviously put a lot into it yourself, didn't you? Yeah, I did, I think down, you know, down through the years, uh, I always liked that character, and I, I always wanted him to be polite. The Mac was yours, though, wasn't it? Well, there's an argument about the Mac, oh. Ross. Uh, <laughs> the, the argument about the Mac is that I thought I read Raincoat in the first script that I read, but the two guys who wrote the script said, no, there was no Raincoat in it. So I, I say that they put the Raincoat in, they say I put the Raincoat in. But at any rate, it is my coat. Now, the first show, it involved a guy that people might not know his name, Stephen Bochco, but he's the guy who went on to produce L.A. Law, um, NYPD Blue, and uh, Hill Street Blues as well. But the guy who directed it, I think we might know, Steven Spielberg. Was he a bit special even then? Well, I knew this guy was exceptional. Uh, the show with Steven Spielberg was the first time in my acting career that I did a scene in which I was unaware where the camera was. In television, the camera is always right there. And we did a scene, and he said, action, we started shooting, and in the middle of the scene, I said, where the hell is the camera? I didn't say it out loud. Uh, because he was the first director that had the camera across the street in the second story window, and he had a long lens on it. And this is going back 40, 30 years ago. 
but it's very common today. Uh, but it wasn't common in television, so I knew I was uh, in the hands of somebody who was special. And I said right away, this guy's too good for television. He was wonderful, Stephen. They were obviously special guys, but what about yourself? Did you think that Columbo was special right from the start? Well, the first time I read it, I said I wanted to play it. And I suppose you've heard the story. They didn't, uh, the, the, the first choice for Columbo was Bing Crosby. No, didn't know this at all. And we were talking about golf. I love golf. And I am very grateful to golf, not only for the game, but for the fact that Bing Crosby turned down the part of Colombo because he had a golf tournament. That's the truth. That's the truth. Well, what about Peter Falk, the man? We're surrounded by these magnificent drawings of yours. How did that all start? I did a play in New York, Prisoner of Second Avenue, and I'm staying at the hotel, 57, uh, 58th Street, Art Students League, 57th Street. I walked by, so I'm going in there. <clears throat> I went in there, I opened the door, and there she was. She was on a platform, and there was a light on her, and nothing else, just a light. And I tell you, to see that woman up there naked, I said, this is where I'm coming every day, because <laughs> I like to draw. The, the LAPD out here has come in for a, for a bit of stick over the, the years. How much, you know, association do you have with the, the real police? Uh, not a lot. Uh, I mean, cops love the show. They, they, they love the show. Once I got stopped uh, driving, you know, cop pulls me over. And when he come over, he saw me, he said, oh, my God. God, wait till I tell my wife, oh, she loves you so much, oh, Jesus, can I see your license? I give my license, wait till she, she, you still live, live at this address? I said, yeah, oh, my God, you're going to have to sign an autograph, yeah, uh, you can mail this in, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He still did you. <laughs> he still did me. Oh. He still did me. Um, the, the Colombo show is, you know, it's there's something bigger than life about Colombo. You know, it's it's not a gritty police show. It's not a police procedural show. It's it, there's not a lot of shooting. Colombo, you know, first of all, guns uh, they're too loud. They hurt his ears. He uh, there was one show there where he he had try to bribe another detective. You go out there to the range and do my test out there for me. I can't stand the noise. Uh, so in that sense, uh, I don't see a lot of detectives. I do call the forensic guys uh, at the LAPD, and they've been very good. That's the kind of thing that I would, would use the LAPD for. You're an intelligent man, Colombo, but you hide it. You pretend you're something you're not. Why? Because of your appearance. You think you cannot get by on looks or polish, so you turn a defect into a virtue. You take people by surprise. They underestimate you, and that's where you trip them up, like coming here tonight. Well, you've got me pegged pretty good, Doctor. And you follow trials and police cases on television, don't you? Because you, yourself, have got quite an inquisitive mind. As a matter of fact, I used to take my dates to uh, night court. I think really? it's a lot of fun on a Saturday night. You for them? <laughs> for them, yeah, because night court, you know, it was all laughs, you know, it's guys, it was, everybody's just guys are drunk or the people get into an argument, it's that and the other thing. And some of those drunks, they, if the judge only gave them a week and, you know, it was December, they say, judge, couldn't you, couldn't you, you know, give me a couple of months, it's cold, <laughs> it's cold, <laughs> it's cold out there, you know. Uh, Oh, oh, I went to the uh, Manson trial when it was out here, and, um, she, you know, I was in England, and I saw the Profumo trial. Really? Yeah. I decided to go over to Old Bailey, and I was in, and when I went in there, there wasn't a lot of people. I mean, there was about eight people waiting, and some went in, and another one, and I went in, and I'd forgotten the name of the girl now that was... That Christine Killer. 
Christine Keeler, but there was another girl there. Was her name Davis? Mandy Rice Davis. Mandy Rice Davis. She was testifying that day. It was very interesting. So I like to go to trials. I've been to many trials. I haven't been to the uh, Simpson trial. Now, you've won Emmys, which is the highest award in TV. It's a bit like winning the Oscar. And I love the way that you keep yours prominently displayed. They're like hiding down in the corner. Well, for a long while, my wife used them as uh, wig racks. <laughs> you know, they're wonderful. I, I didn't know what the hell happened to the Emmys, you know. It's, 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 geez, they used to... Sometimes you don't notice something is missing right away, you know. Maybe it took me three years or something. <laughs> Something's missing here, and I know, oh, where are those things? And then, because you can't see when I had the wig on it, you know. Oh, you see, you see the base, but I'm not... What are you doing here? What is there left for you to do? Because Columbo, worldwide success, you're a very respected actor, lots of great movies to your credit as well. What is there still to do? Well, the same thing I've been doing for 40 years, or 45 years, 50, however long it is. And that's money well, get a script, you like the part. Get the job and go do it. You know? I mean, I like to draw it. I like to play golf. I like to fight with my wife. Um, and if a good part comes along, I like to play it. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's my pleasure, Royce. It's been really nice talking to you. Lovely to talk to you, Peter.